I'm Anthony Samago, and I wrote the book Forest Hill Cemetery. It's a book that actually is a photographic gleaning of the history and development of a very important cemetery in the city of Boston, founded in 1848 and still an active cemetery today in 2009. When it was founded, it was a city of Roxbury Municipal Cemetery. It evolved as a rural arboretum cemetery in the 19th and early 20th century, and today encompasses a thriving nexus of people of all sorts of descriptions of different people of socioeconomic incomes, racial, ethnicity, and is a great aspect of Boston in some ways in a composite of the cemetery itself. Uh, when you did research for the book, was there anything that you learned that you didn't know before? Well, I think there were lots of things that I knew, but there were also other things people shared with me. It was a photographic history, so what I was doing was using many of the historical photographs that were in the collection of the archives of Forest Hill Cemetery. One of the things that always impresses me, though, is the wide magnitude of the different types of people that were buried there. It went the gamut from very wealthy Bostonians, financiers, philanthropists, as well as industrialists. But one of the things is, even in the 19th century, it encompassed people of middle class and even working status. And in some ways, it was a great thing that we saw not only people of the Civil War, but in some ways, people that were simple people that had simply lived their lives, were loved and loved someone, and died and were buried at Forest Hills. And it creates this rich overlay of history of the not only internationally famous, nationally famous, locally famous, but even people whose names no longer come down to us as really making a stride other than the fact that they once had lived. Hmm. And you've written quite a few books about Boston. Do you have a favorite book? I think all of them are favorite simply for the fact they represent usually a six-month period out of my life. I think each of these individual neighborhood histories of the city of Boston composite in some ways a way of how the city has evolved from the annexation process of the mid-19th century to the neighborhoods of today. They have a rich overlay of people that have contributed to its history and development. And from the period of the 17th century when they were settled by people coming from the west of England seeking religious freedom, today they represent a wide diversity of people that have come here for many different reasons. And sometimes many of these neighborhoods themselves have that rich overlay that's only chronicled in the street names, not always something that people remember, but in some ways that people might live on a street and not even know for whom it was named. So these books are somewhat simplistic, but in a way with a photograph, they're attuned to the person who actually is more um, television, DVD, or video oriented rather than reading a text history of their neighborhood. How did you get interested in doing uh, local history? Well, one of the things is this is only a, a fun aspect of my life. Uh, in my real career, I'm treasurer of a nationwide company in Boston. I teach college at the Urban College of Boston for the last 13 years. But I went to a paper show. I collect photographs and ephemera, and I ran into somebody who had recently written a book for Arcadia. They said to me that I should contact them, that I would be a natural to write a book for their series. And I contacted them that week with no expectations, and within the week I had a contract to write a book on Dorchester. I finished that book, it made the Boston Globe bestsellers list, and that was the first out of what has become now 57 books. And it just seems in a lot of ways each of them have simply led to the next book. They're not only the Images of America series, which are photographs, but we also have books called the Then and Now series, and even architecture books. They're a lot of fun to do, and it's even more fun when somebody says that a family member appears in a photograph. That means a lot to me. It means an awful lot to the person that says it. But I think these are things that include the normal, run-of-the-mill person that doesn't think that they're part of history, but they truly are. And do you have any advice for writers who want to write a history book? Well, I never really expected to write. I always hoped I would write, but in my 30s I was intrigued enough to actually write lots of articles for local newspapers. 
the Jamaica Plain Gazette, Dorchester Community News, and the Milton Times, and it would appear on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, and they were a lot of fun to do. But if I had advice for a young author or even an older author, what I would say to them is strive. Write for whatever you can, whether it's for your own enjoyment or for something of a local newspaper, or if you are interested, pursue it. Contact a publisher, explain your interests, and you may be surprised it could actually lead to a book contract.